and I'd like you to put your hands together and give a great welcome to Marty Wilson. My first ever time in Paris, best thing I saw, not the Eiffel Tower, not the Arc de Triomphe, not the Champ Jealousy. <laughs> best thing I saw, in my hotel room, on the telly. On the telly comes Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, in French. <laughs> How good is that? L'Empire contre attaque. <laughs> it was just awesome. It's like, there's all your favourite characters but they're all talking the language of love. <laughs> and it just put this whole new spin on everything they were saying. You know, like C-3PO and R2-D2 having a fight like they do, but because they're talking the language of romance. It's like they're having this lover's tiff. Like C-3PO is just there going, how good they do? Qu'est-ce que tu as cherché? Idiot, elle est à moi. And little Yoda was there, and because he was talking French, it was, it was like he was this sleazy little munchkin firmly on the ball, just hobbling around, just going, snog you, I can. Mm, yes. <laughs> and when I was young again, I'd always be whinging about, oh, God, I've just got everything set up now, it's all changed again, it's not fair. Why does life never work out just as I plan it? Not fair. Of course it's not fair. Life isn't fair. The world isn't fair. <laughs> like if the universe was a fair place, the only time they'd ever let Britney Spears anywhere near a microphone would be to say, Price check, check out three, lamb mince, one kilo. Price check, check out three. <laughs> on, like, I'm a pharmacist turned copywriter, turned stand-up comic, turned wine writer, turned author and speaker, and I still find change incredibly unsettling. You know, if any of your friends ever stand up and say, I love change, I am the change master, change scares me not. <laughs> Just point and say, liar, liar, your nervous skidmark pants are on fire. <laughs> but there are things we can do. There are things we can do to, to manage change and wrap our head around change a bit better. The first thing we can do, listen to your body, not your brain. Because your conscious mind just stresses out and gets all worried. But our bodies, so we should listen to our bodies. Because when it comes to change, our bodies understand life better than we do. Everyone, close your eyes for a second. Close your eyes. Everybody. Yeah. Imagine you're in bed, not the little, not the lady walking back to her seat, that'd be really embarrassing. <laughs> Imagine you're in bed, lying on your left side, having one of those much underrated afternoon nana naps. Oh, Afro. People with young kids just stretch your mind way, 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 way back. <laughs> now, you're lying on your left side. After a while, your left hip gets a little bit achy. Your left shoulder gets a bit of a twinge. <laughs> Your body, without even talking to your conscious mind, rolls you over to your right-hand side, everything's wonderful again, super snugly. Everyone say, uh. <laughs> okay, open your eyes now. <laughs> That's awesome from up here, I've got to tell you. <laughs> but the thing to notice is not what your body does, but what your body does not do. When things get uncomfortable, your, your body doesn't get all stubborn and stick to its left, left side through thick and thin because I'm a left-sider. I've always been a left-sider. I come from a proud family of left-siders. <laughs> you know, your body doesn't freeze up all terrified of change. You know, oh, the left side was comfortable when I first lay down. Why isn't it comfortable now? I cannot roll over until I know exactly what it's going to feel like lying on my right side. <laughs> and your body doesn't endlessly distract itself trying to avoid its fear of change. You know, like, Oh, gee, what if, I, what if I read some books on change first? What if I read some books on rolling over? You're like, awaken the, awaken the right sider within. You know, the seven habits of effective rolling over. You're like, oh, the chicken, chicken soup for the right side of my soul. You're like, maybe there's a 12 step program I could roll in. The left side is anonymous. Like, Hi, my name's Marty and I'm a left sider. It's been six days since my last roll over. <laughs> Hi, Marty. <laughs> no, our bodies just change. Left side, achy breaky, roll over. You know, all day, sitting down, numb bum, stand up. Simple. <laughs> all I'm saying, in times like these, you are far better off throwing your energy into new things. Change is good. Different is good. You know, if there's a new role going at work, put your hand up. If there's a great house in a different suburb, have a look at it at least. You know, if your wife asks you to dress up like Elmer Fudd, give it a go. <laughs> That's the worst thing. And no, I'm not in character now. <laughs> Be very quiet. <laughs> I'm hunting.
hunting furry mammals. <laughs> Change is like the Terminator. You know, you can run away from it for a while, but it will keep coming. It will track you down. It does not feel pity or remorse, and it will not stop till it has you pinned to the floor, whining like the scared little baby that you are. <laughs> Actually, that's not very fair on change. <laughs> you will always have problems. The trick in life is to make sure that your problems are worth having. You know, like for example, from at the moment, the world climate, uh, the, the worldwide economic climate, the markets are sick as a dog. But you know, let's, let's take stock. Compare your 2009 with the people of Bushland, Victoria. Things ain't that bad. I mean, let's have a, take a worldwide view of things. You know, like how bad's it gonna get? We live in the West. How bad's it gonna get? I read the other day, if you've got money in the bank, in your wallet, and in a little saucer by the side of the bed, you're in the top 4% of the world's population. So, like, how bad's it gonna get, really? I know I'm having a bit of a rant, but I've got to tell you, I'm getting a bit sick of just how many Aussies are having such a big sook about Australia lately. Like, they are. Like, everyone's getting really down and whinging about Australia. Like, every other country in the world, people love their own country. Kiwis love New Zealand. You know, Americans like, ah, oh, greatest country in the world. You know, like the Irish, like, ah, oh, it's fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Even the English, even the English people are like, you know, it's so crap, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, isn't it? So crap, it's wonderful. <laughs> but Aussies have, Aussies, a lot of Aussies sort of turn into that, you know, that spoiled six year old wake, wakes up on Christmas Day with nothing they wanted, just walk around and going, oh, I hate these places, it's rummy, shut up, I hate it, nothing here, I'm like, shut up, I know, shut up, I hate it, no, no, I hate it, shut up. <laughs> but it's nuts. See, what were the biggest, two biggest health threats announced to the Australian public last year? These two incredible killers that are just going to rip apart the fabric of our nation allergies and obesity. Do you seriously think there's anyone walking around Baghdad today like boom, car bomb to the left of them, kaboom, suicide bomb to the right of them? My sinuses! My <laughs> oh, look, my bum is enormous! <laughs> look at my muffin tops! <laughs> Let's go to the BBC World Service for today's deadly pollen count from Iraq. <laughs> Laughter is fantastic at reducing stress hormones. Releasing endorphins, lowering blood pressure, like, and also it's fantastic at diffusing potentially aggressive situations, which are really common in times of change. You know, for example, road rage. Apparently, road rage is madly on the up, and um, this American mate of mine is madly into the road rage. Like, he's Southern American, like real down home. You're like, hey, don't go change him. Yeah, have a nice day. Like, if anything, a bit sickly sweet. <laughs> but you put two tons of machinery around him. He pops a handful of the angry pills. <laughs> he's mad for it. Uh, goes absolutely nuts in the car. And his girlfriend, Saskia. 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 Saskia is one of those girls, everyone knows at least one woman like this, who's like right into like, you know, the crystals, aromatherapy, dolphins, you know, tarot, astrology. <laughs> no nice way to say it. Hairy, hairy girl. Huh? <laughs> you know, so ask you tries like these new age anger techniques on this mate of mine to try and centre him and calm him down. <laughs> like, he'll be going nuts in the car and she'll be like, honey, honey, Jeremy, picture yourself at home with a chamomile tea. <laughs> Darling, your anger only hurts you. <laughs> Which drives him absolutely mad. <laughs> But he has discovered this one technique, and you guys can try it at home. I'm telling you about it because it's funny. If you're, going, if you're you know, about to go into road rage at home, you can go nuts, abuse whoever you want. But you have to do it using old Broadway show tunes. <laughs> and it works a treat. Because there's only so aggro you can get when you're in the car by yourself. Thing. There's no dickhead like you, dickhead like no dickhead I know. <laughs> <laughs> and he demonstrated it for me. Like we were driving along, and driving along, and this bloke in a Range Rover cut us up. You know those like typical inner city rich buggers who buys the Range Rover so they can successfully navigate those treacherous, leafy avenues of Mossman. You know? <laughs> I'm guessing there's a few here today. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, bother it. Love it. Love it. The simply murderous pothole in Lower Pumpernickel Mews. <laughs> I thought this mate of mine was going to go nuts, but he's just calmly got out of the car, looked across at me and just said, West Side Story. He's gone up the black house, he runs out of swear, middle of Mossman, middle of the day like this, just gone. <laughs> you make me sick in your four-wheel drive, dressed like a dick in your four-wheel drive, country road shirt in your four-wheel drive, but don't get no dirt on your four-wheel drive. I thought to myself, I can do that. <laughs> I was practicing at home, biding my time. About two weeks later, driving my little boring man's Camry that I've got over here, and uh, this guy in a Saab just jams the brakes right in front of me, almost run off his bum. My mate thinks I'm going to go crazy. I've been rehearsing. <laughs> <laughs> I just calmly get out of the car, look across at him, and just say, Sound of music. <laughs> And I start walking up the guy in the sub, going, Bastards in Bentleys and cretins in Calais, ducking and weaving and barging in my way, driving like dickheads and cutting in front, just like old Saab drivers, you are a huge Tongan who <laughs> got the cheeses out of me. Just smack me. Oh, 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 oh. And just a quick tip. New feeling works really well on fear, not so good on physical pain. <laughs> I know it seems almost un-Australian to talk about your fear at all. Uh, you know, let alone reframe your fear and call it new feeling. <laughs> but it works. Trust me, it works. I did it for 10 years on the stand-up circuit in the UK, and I did it the day I got married. The, I used it the day I became a father for the first time. My little boy used it, and it works so well for him that uh, he explained it to his five-year-old friends and it worked for them as well. Don't feel the fear and do it anyway. Get the new feeling and do it gladly. Then get some mentors and do it wisely. And then chuck some funny in on top of it and do it with a big belly laugh. Like, life is a short, precious gift. Don't let that Neanderthal part of your brain make you spend it all tucked up safe and sound in your cave. To use a more Australian metaphor, don't live between the flags. You know, sure, the beach, swim between the flags. But don't live between the flags. If life has a flavour, it's not ham and pineapple. If life has a motto, it's not, same again, thanks. If life has a soundtrack, it's not a non-stop block of classic rock. <laughs> In the 200th year since Darwin's birth, let's do him proud and chase down some evolution. I've been Marty Wilson. Come be a hairy mammal with me. Thanks very much for having me. Back up and up.